K-pop includes not only music, but also many things like fan service, fan culture, merchandises, rules for idols, etc. And among those, fan culture is the most complicated, and sometimes even most eccentric, as there are lots of cases where fans would do a bunch of weird things to idols that outsiders have to feel second-handed embarrassment. Number 1. Ollie London copied a bunch of big K-pop artists. Talking of the most contentious personas that often use K-pop for clout, apparently no one can miss out on Ollie London. If you want to know more about how cringe and stubborn he is to become famous, you can go watch the video I've mentioned earlier about ridiculous things he did to K-pop idols, particularly BTS's Jimin, for the sake of his reputation. However, as BTS wasn't active in South Korea for a long time, and their activities had mostly been in the States for the past months, London had to find other targets to push his reputation in the K-community. The very first target of London was Pak Chun Young, and on May 10th, he suddenly tweeted that, though he was a male, he still managed to get pregnant with him and give birth to a baby boy, Chimi. Seeing that the reaction wasn't as big as he had expected, he went on to do a more controversial thing, cueing Rosé into his tweet in a ridiculous way. When Rosé had attended the Met Gala way back in September 2021, London brought it up on May 10th and said Rosé looked exactly like him. However, as Rosé was also on a hiatus at that time, and the Met Gala thing also took place a very long time ago, the tweet garnered even fewer reactions than the previous one. Seemingly having learned from the mistakes, London went after TXT's Hoonin Kai in his most recent attempt for his reputation to stay afloat. And as Hoonin Kai was on a promotion, he managed to cause a solid public uproar this time. On June 8th, London went on Twitter and questioned if Hoonin Kai and he were related, as Hoonin Kai in the anti-romantic era totally looked like him. In case they weren't related, London said it was probably that Hoonin Kai was inspired to copy his look. As the tweet started popping up on the internet, London made other tweets straight up confirming Hybe styled Hoonin Kai based on his famed Korean aesthetics, and even created a TikTok video to push the thing further. Then, Emma Wei started digging further, and found out that back in 2020, London posted on Facebook to ask for detailed information about TXT's Yeonjun, called Yeonjun Shi, and said that Yeonjun looked like him. Number 2. Fanboy invited Jennie to dinner through a $30,000 billboard. In K-pop, there are many so-called fans like London who use idols as the launching pad for their fame and wealth. However, there are also many fans who are in total contrast, spending money on idols like crazy, and acting as if nothing on earth matters more than having a pinch of attention from their bias. One of the epitomes of this was how one of Jenny's Philippines fanboys had spent around $60,000 to display several billboards in Seoul to ask her out for a dinner date. According to Rappler, this boy was Christian Albert Gaza, or Sean Gaza for short. To impress Jenny and implicitly brag about his wealthiness, he flexed his money with some billboards in Seoul, sending out the cringy confession, can I take you out to dinner? And make me the happiest man alive? Apparently, the first part wasn't that odd, but considering the way he asked Jenny to make him the happiest man alive, many blinks said they were annoyed, as the words could be easily misinterpreted and taken out of context to have a perverted implication. That was not to mention how Jean Gaza also frequently edited Jenny and him into one photo, and acted as if he was truly dating Jenny. While it was all Jean Gaza's business to do whatever he wanted, and actually this action didn't do harm to anybody, many said they still felt the secondhand embarrassment for his cringy action. Others even trended the hashtags Protect Jenny and Leave Jenny Alone, criticizing Jean Gaza for being creepy and obsessive. Number 3. Fanboy traced down every place Jenny had visited and took a picture at the same spot. At this point, it's obvious that being super duper famous doesn't necessarily mean one is always respected as a human, since besides the extra action of that Philippines fanboy, Blinks also found out another cringy guy that has been spending tons of money on tracing down every single place Jenny had visited and touched every single thing Jenny had touched, Lee Hyun Soo. What's even more disturbing is that, as he lives in South Korea, he can approach Jenny even easier than the Philippines boy. For example, he managed to find a random corner of the street where Jenny once took photos and recreated the same pictures. Or another time, when Jenny posted that she was choosing some books to buy at a bookstore, he went to the exact same store, exact same aisle, and even the exact same shelf to touch one of the books in Jenny's photos. He followed Jenny to the event of Gentle Monster, to the Christmas tree beside which she took photos, bought the dress Jenny wore in the advertisement for Samsung, and bought a bunch of clothes from Nye, a brand suspected to be owned by Jenny. In fact, he even went extra lengths and traveled to Paris, stood at the exact same spot as Jenny, and also did the same pose as Jenny did. According to the OP, after all the cringe things he did, he even got the balls to insult Jenny after her dating news with GD broke out, and only after many blinks confronted him did he take the thing down. 
things got so big after the accusation, Mia also removed the guy's feedback through the repost that had received a fair amount of interaction. Number four, fans sneaked into NCT's tour bus to touch their bed. Back in 2019, when NCT 127 traveled to the States for their world tour, a Twitter user, at Babukye, posted videos of her and her friends on NCT 127's tour bus, and pridefully bragged that they were there illegally. According to this person, the bus driver of NCT 127 let them in. As if she was scared that people wouldn't believe what she did, the girl even took a video of her and her friends on the bus, excitedly touching and making the bed for NCT 127, and leaving a letter for one of the members. Probably having found the hotel address the group would stay in through the driver, or the information around the bus, the girl even booked a room there to breathe the same air with NCT 127. Responding to the video, many have expressed their embarrassment for being in the same phantom with this girl. Because while the intention of other NCTisans when sharing the bus location was for others to come, take pictures, meet the members, and organize something fun together, she and her friend turned everything into a big mess. Under the fierce pressure, the girl apologized for her wrongdoings and said that it was due to her extreme excitement. However, to people, she was just stubbornly defending herself, as she could have just asked the driver to send the letter to the boys, rather than spontaneously jumping on their bus. Number 5. Fanboys don't take a shower before going to fan meetings of TWICE and Promise 9. Under a post on Reddit asking people to name a few things fans did to idols that made them cringe, some have brought up the point that they heard on the grapevine many fanboys didn't bother to dress up or even take a shower prior to the fan meetings. There was even a story that Jung Yeon once complimented a fangirl for smelling good, but she in fact just took a shower before meeting twice and didn't put any perfume on. As many onces are males, this story implied that lots of them didn't take a shower and carried their heavy body odor onto the meeting with twice. Imagine meeting a bunch of people and having to sniff various unpleasant smells at once. For sure you can imagine how painful the nose of those girls would be after such events. Besides Twice, Promise 9 also had to suffer from the same problem. Back in May this year, Jisoo made headlines everywhere on the internet after her message telling fans to take a shower before coming to the group's meeting. To make the reminder less offensive, she politely added that, as she also washed her face up, she hoped fans could follow suit. Later, probably out of the fear that fans couldn't understand her implication well, she sent other messages, clarifying that what she meant by washing up was taking a shower, and it would be good if people could thoroughly scrub their bodies as she does. While this is a very sensitive topic, and some believe that, as an idol living on the money of fans, Jisoon should have kept her mouth shut, the fact that she didn't care about all those things and straight up called out the unhygienic people has spoken a lot about how terribly long the situation has been enduring. So, do you know any other things that fans did to idols, yet make an outsider like you feel the secondhand embarrassment? Comment down below to share your thoughts with us. Also, remember to like, share, and subscribe to Be Boss TV for more interesting K-pop content. Thank you for watching.